Do you remember the film Finding Nemo? That bit where the diver rips Nemo from the loving embrace of his dad and takes him away to a life of captivity in a completely unsuitable tank and he's almost immediately embroiled in a plot by the other fish to escape this evil tank. Yeah, that did a lot of harm to aquatics. That did a lot of harm to stuff that can be very, very good. Hi, my name's Ruth MacDonald, and today we're talking about wild-caught fish. It's an emotive topic, and I'm not going to blame anyone for having strong opinions in either direction. What I'm going to ask is that we don't have those knee-jerk reactions. For some of you, it'll be all wild-caught fish are good. We should be catching wild-caught. It's brilliant. It's the most amazing thing. It helps everybody. It's magic. And other people going, we should only ever have captive bred fish or wild caught are bad. It's evil. It's terrible. It's ripping fish from the wild. It's destroying ecosystems. Both of those viewpoints are wrong. What we need to do as fish keepers is step back, take a pause and have a look at the reality. And I think that is very, very difficult as a human to look at anything with a completely unbiased eye. I can't, but I'm going to do my best. So here's my views on the whole wild caught captive bred debate. I'm also coming at this from someone who from a very young age was involved in conservation projects. In some areas, people are struggling to make ends meet. In a lot of areas, they never had the the desire, never mind the infrastructure, but the desire to have that infrastructure to have a capitalistic society. And whether you agree with capitalism or not, that is not what I'm debating. But what I'm saying is there are nations out there that didn't ever sign up to need money. They now need money. And depending on where you are in the world, your country may have already gone through that development stage. You don't have to, you don't have to chop down a forest to put your house in place because that forest was chopped down a long time ago. Someone else did that for you. You don't have to worry about um, deforestation in your area for cattle because it was already deforested. Where I'm sitting right now is built uh, in an area that was surrounded by marshes. And in the Roman period, all the trees around here were chopped down. We can see that change. So for us, the idea of deforestation and needing to destroy our environment so we can physically exist in the space is remote. But remote by time. There are people out there who have to make a choice. They have to eat. They have to make sure their children are healthy. And they are wanting to give their children better lives. So they're talking about having things like clothes, medical care, schooling. It's not a purely academic environment versus the fish keepers. It is an industry. Fish keeping is an industry. I refer to it as a hobby. And by that, I mean I am a hobbyist. I don't make any money out of my fish. I'm not selling fish. I'm not um, breeding fish in any meaningful scale. So for me, I am just an end user of effect. For the people further up the chain, it isn't a hobby. It is a business. And I think it's part of our job as that end user, as the person, if you think about the fish starts at the other end and come down to us, well, the money starts at us and goes back up to them. To choose what we want and not just consider the health of the fish, the type of the fish, the eventual adult size of the fish, the water that fish lives in, but did that fish come into the industry in a sustainable manner? Right, let's look at the negatives of wild caught. Let's get them taken apart, taken away straight away. The negatives. You are removing a fish from the ecosystem. You are removing a fish from the wild. 
Yeah, bad news on that one. I don't think that could ever really be a realistic argument. We know for the majority of species that numbers are actually falling. So that means for every pair of parents, I know a lot of fish don't pair up, but for every pair of parents, less than two are surviving. And given that the vast majority of fish will lay thousands, tens of thousands of eggs in their lives, even live bearers can get into the high hundreds of fry in their lives. And when you consider that for the vast majority of them, less than two are surviving, that means hundreds and thousands are dying. They are being predated on. They are dying when waterways dry up seasonally. They are dying from um, pollution. They are dying from changing climate. They are dying because a gold mine came along and needed to divert the water off the river and all of a sudden the river dried up. They are dying because thousands of trees were chopped down and all of a sudden tons of sediment entered the river and just choked the waterways. They are dying because we changed the bay and the water might be coming further up, the seawater might be coming further up river and making it saline. They are dying because we spray insects. Uh, repellent insect um, pesticides and insecticides. There's the words I was trying for. And that means their fish, their food is either toxic or just not there anymore. It is not a Disney perfect world out there. And until we start, and I mean we as in the human race, start to make a real effort to improve that environment the whole ripping them out of the wild thing is a completely false argument and crucially once the environment improves and is safe for them a few fish can start to repopulate those areas you don't need all the ones that may have died in the wild to upkeep those numbers and where is being taken the, the capture is being done sustainably and Project Piaba has done a long-term study, and for many of the fish the fishermen catch in um, the Brazilian regions, we know that numbers have not altered, and in fact, for some, they've gone up slightly. The fishermen taking fish, effectively acting as some sort of predator, isn't impacting the ecosystem. Because when these fish are born, they are born in their millions for healthy populations. The other argument is that what the other side to that argument, and I'm going to say this one about shouldn't be taken out the wild, ripped out the wild. Is everyone fishing them sustainably? No, far from it. And that's why when people say all wild caught is good, I get my, my back gets up a little bit. I don't like that statement. Zebraplex have been overfished or the aquarium hobby. When, um, Celestial pearl danios, the galaxy rosbora, were first discovered. They were overfished for the hobby. Um, Bengal cardinals, overfished for the hobby. Clownfish. The Finding Nemo film spared a craze for clownfish. They are now captive bred in large numbers, but in that initial rush, they were overfished. Many of these populations are facing other pressures. I mean, Zebraplex is a, a prime example. They've had a dam built in the very, very tiny range that they have. Big dams being built, alter the water depths across their range. There is now a large mining company that may accidentally release large amounts of toxins into their water. Um, there is all sorts of climate change and deforestation going on in the region surrounding that. Massive fires. The zebraplex population is under so much pressure that the aquarists taking too many can slip them into extinction. And that is why they're probably going to be included on um, Appendix 1 for CITES. But wild caught can be an incredible force for good. Remember I was talking about people needing an income. In some areas, that income is provided by sustainable wild caught. Now, wild caught can be such as in areas of Brazil where during the rainy season, the fishermen go into the flooded areas and they collect the fish that are there. 
because these rainy seasons normally in, um, indicate breeding season, they are catching the young next generation. Is it perfect? No, there are problems there. For example, many fishermen only target particular species and they might catch other ones which they are not carefully putting back in the water. They're often just leading, leading, leaving to die on the sand. That is bad. But education for them can make real changes in this sort of practice. And we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and say to them, we're not buying fish from you. Because trust me, if they have to go for gold mine, allow gold mining on their land or logging or selling their children into prostitution, which is something that actually happens, that is far worse, not only for them, but for many of these options for the ecosystem itself. The other side of the coin is captive bred. Now, many species are... And I'm going to make a distinction between captive farmed, uh, captive bred, and tank bred. Captive farmed can mean they take, say, the eggs or the very small fry or even breeding pairs out of the wild. They then create um, nets at the side of rivers where they raise on the fry or allow the adults to breed or whatever it may be. Slightly separate from the ecosystem, you're not getting the wild fish swimming in and out, but at the same time, in the same area. It can have all the advantages of wild caught in providing income for local farmers. It can, however, mean that parts of the ecosystem are disturbed. And as we know from huge scale farming of things like salmon, often it can get to such a scale that it actually starts to be a source of pollution itself. In small amounts, perfectly safe. Once it becomes industrialized, a big problem. Captive farmed can just mean large-scale farming facilities. For things like complex, they're often bred in huge ponds, huge mud-filled ponds, so they can burrow into the banks and breathe that way. Often this farming involves hormone treatment. And to be honest, more and more we're seeing treatments that may be inhibiting fertility of the fish. And we're also seeing the morphs, the balloon morphs, the short-bodied morphs, the hybrids and things like that, which aren't brilliant for the fish. Tank bread literally means that. It's bred in a tank. It's raised on in the... That... Many species are done on an industrial scale in that, discus being a great example. That can also mean it was done by a specialist in this country in his own fish house. So there is a huge scale scope for tank bred fish there. Now you might be saying that I've pointed out that wild caught can be a problem. It can be good, it can be a problem. I'd say sustainable wild caught is one of the leading conservation tools that fish keepers can help with. I, I will state that. Unsustainable wild caught is one of the worst things fish keepers can be a part of. So why don't we just play it safe and go for tank bread only, captive bread only? Because it can be a real problem. Fish can escape, and in many areas, these fish being captive farmed have escaped into local areas. It's even worse with things like turtles. There are North American species of turtles over large parts of um, Southeast Asia because they've managed to escape from the farms. Now, it can also cause pollution because the waste from the fish is being pumped out into the rivers. They are often living in quarters that are far too confined. So disease is being spread quite rapidly amongst them. That leads to antibiotic use. That can then, if that water's then pumped into the rivers, you've got disease and antibiotics and all this coming in. And you often don't get as healthy a fish. Wild caught fish, in some cases, can be much healthier. In other cases, captive bred can be much healthier. It all depends on the scenario, the species, all this sort of thing. There are some diseases that are pretty much only found in captive bred fish. I mean, we have the standard one, you must worm your fish when they come in. But the thing for wild caught is if they're really sickly and diseased, there's not much chance they're going to survive. Whereas in captive bred, they can be artificially sort of limped along. And high levels of antibiotics is one way that they do it. 
Um, high levels of salt is another. Yes, it may destroy their kidneys and liver, but they'll live long enough to get to the fish shop and be sold, so yay for the person doing that. Poor bloody fish, and to be honest, poor bloody us, because we're the one paying the money for it and then losing the fish quite quickly. Uh, Colmenaris, yes, it is known from the wild. It is known quite frequently from the wild. It is not known anywhere near as frequently as it is in captivity. Asian strain Colmenaris is one of the worst diseases we see in our fish tanks. That is not known from the wild. Discus plague, we don't even know 100% sure what that is. Pretty much isolated to, in fact, it is isolated as far as I'm aware, to tank bred fish. Camelanus worms. Quite well known from the wild, nowhere near the numbers as are known in tank bred captivity. And even things like white spot, which is an entirely well known disease in the wild, it's cyclical, kills far fewer fish than we see in our tanks, um, is so prevalent in some farms that the fish are kept in special conditions to get rid of the white spot at the wholesaler before they're shipped up further on. It's yet another thing to consider. So what would I do? Well, what do I do? Because remember, this is my opinions and this is my, my views on it. Research the fish you're buying. Always research the fish you're buying. Ideally before you go and get it. But if you're in the fish shop and you spot something and you go, ooh, quite like that, I wonder what that is. There's nothing wrong, by the way, in, in, in walking away for 10 minutes and having a look. If they're selling that well that they will sell out that day, talk to the person behind the counter and see if they can order more in for you next week. Because if they're selling that well, they'll normally be very happy to get more in. If it's a very unusual species and people are coming from all over the country and clamoring to get them, Consider, do you want them because they're really popular? Do you have the right setup for them? If they're this unusual and rare, maybe let them go to someone who breeds them specifically. But research, 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 research. Where are they coming from? And don't be afraid to say to the person behind the counter, that fish I've just seen there, those cardinal tetras, where did they come from? Because they've ordered them from somewhere. And that place will normally know where they got them from. And this information is normally available. Did they come in from one of the Czech farms? Have they been wild caught? Did they come from a local breeder? Let's say you do a bit of research and you actually find out that the bulk of these fish are wild caught and that's causing too much pressure on the wild population. Should you go and buy them? No. Should you never own them? Again, no. Ask around. Is there anyone breeding that species? If the answer is yes, contact them. Do they have some coming up? Do they have any for sale? If it's something like a cichlid, then there's multiple cichlid associations in every country, pretty much. Talk to them. See what they're like. Crucially, you may find that there's a very similar species that's being happily tank bred, or something that fits just that niche in your tank that's much more suitable. If you find that they're captive bred, look at the price. Because if they are very, very cheap, they probably didn't come from a grape farm, and a grape farm probably isn't sustainable. But the only thing I can say is don't just research your fish, research where they came from and ask, are these sustainable? And by sustainable, I mean, are they putting any pressure on the wild population? Are they damaging the ecosystem in any way? And if we come back in a hundred years, will me having purchased this fish have impacted on nature in any way at all, other than for the positive? Because if you can find those projects that are working to improve the, um, the sustainability of these fish, and you can purchase your fish knowing that some of that purchase price 
is going to go back to someone working very hard to keep the local environment as pristine as possible to make sure that those fish survive for another year, another generation, another hundred generations. Then surely isn't that something we should all be trying to do?